Hey, hey, what's up? In this video, we're gonna create a cool little, uh, maybe not that cool, but uh, a little web shop with a cart. So it's gonna look something like this because I found this fake store API where we can get some data to create this little store. So that's what I'm using here. And you can add stuff to the cart, as you can see, and it adds them up here. And then we have the cart button here. And we have these nice little buttons where we can change the amount and it will show the total. And of course, it's this, if this was a real shop, you would have a button here to go to the payment and stuff like that, but I won't do that. And I'm gonna use Material UI, I'm gonna use React Query and TypeScript and style components for this one. So it's gonna be a lot of learning in this video, I think, and uh, it's quite a common scenario where you have to create something like this. Even if it's not for a web shop, you may need some kind of this uh, little pop-up sidebar in some applications. I think it will be a good practice. And also at the end of this video, I will also give you a code for five free tickets to the Test JS Summit that is on the January 28th and 29th of 2021. So if you watch this video after this, bad for you, you won't get those tickets because the event has already been. So, <laughs> but at least if you watch it before, you have the chance to get one of the free tickets to this Test JS Summit event. They were kind to give me five free tickets for this one. But that's at the end of this video. For now, we're gonna set up our application. And in this first part, I'm gonna bootstrap the application with Create React App, and we're gonna install the dependencies. And we're also gonna set up React Query so that we can use that one in the application. So let's start with that. Go back to your terminal and in, inside somewhere where you want to have the application, I have mine in a folder that's called React Shopping Cart. So we're gonna create our project, mpx, create-react-app, and then we name our product. I think it's gonna be named react-shopping-cart, yeah. Then we use the dash dash template and TypeScript. This is how you set up a TypeScript application with Create React App and we press enter. It will take some time, so I'm gonna skip this. Okay, that went well. We have our application and make sure to navigate inside of the folder CD React dash shopping dash cart. Clear the console and then we're gonna install our dependencies. So first we're gonna use Material UI. So there are a couple of things that we need from that library. I'm gonna install the core and also the icons because I have an icon up here you can see in the store that I use for this one. So npm i at material dash ui forward slash core, that's the core library. And then we need icons. So at material dash ui forward slash icons. So that's everything we need for the material UI. And then we're gonna install React Query. So npm i react dash query. So I'm gonna clear the console. We have one more thing to install and that's the style components. And you may think, well, why are you using style components when you're using material UI? And that is because I don't really like the way that I style stuff in material UI. I think there's a lot of great stuff in the library itself, but the styling is, in my opinion, not good. So that's why I use style components. I will get much cleaner code instead of using their internal way of styling things. So that's why. But it's highly opinionated, of course. So if you want to use the internal stuff instead, you can do that. But I won't show it in this tutorial. So I'm gonna install mpmi styled-components. And as we're in TypeScript land now, we also need to install the types. So we have at types forward slash styled dash components. All right, we can open up our code. Like this. And I'm gonna do some cleanup first. We don't need app.css. We don't need app.test. We don't need the index.css, not the logo and not the report web vitals and the setup tests. So delete those ones. And inside of the index.tsx, we can remove some stuff, remove the report web vitals, 
remove the index. We can also remove this one here. And actually we can't use the strict mode as we're going to use the drawer in Material UI. Or we can use it, but we will get a warning. So I'm going to remove strict mode. They haven't fixed that yet. I hopefully, hopefully they're going to fix it soon. It will throw a warning in the console. So for now, I just remove it. Uh, and inside the app.tsx file, we can also do some cleanup. You can see that this one is grayed out, and that's because we don't need to import React when we're using React 17 and above, as we use now. So we remove that, then we remove the logo, and we also remove this one. And here we can just remove everything that has to do with the header, and we can say start. I like to have an arrow function, so I'm going to convert this one to an arrow function. You can do whatever you want. Something like this. Save it. And I'm going to do one more thing before we start up the application to see that it works. So we have something to start from. And that's inside of the index.tsx file. We're going to set up React Query. So I'm also going to bump this one up. Maybe like this. So we import query client and something that's called query client provider from react-query, right? Then we're going to wrap this app with the query client provider. And it takes in a prop that's called client. And this client is going to be something that we create here. So we have a const, we can call it client, and we create a new query client. And we call it like this. And this will make sure that we have a client in this const. So we can provide this client to the client client to the query client provider. Oh, long names here. And I move the app inside of this one. And this will make sure that we can use React Query in our application. So I save the file. And then I go back to my console. And I'm going to type in npm start. Yeah, I already have my other application running on port 3000. So this one is going to be on port 3001 instead. So I'm going to open up that here, localhost. And I'm going to move it here. So this one is the application we're working on. And we also have the finished application there. So it seems to be working. Just going to check the console. Great. So that's the setup. We're going to move on and create the different items for the shop itself. And then lastly, we're going to create the cart and the items for the cart. All right, we're going to be inside of the app.tsx file. And first, we're going to start with some imports, or it's actually quite a lot of imports we need for this one. <laughs> so first, we're going to import use state from React. Then we're going to import use query from React Query. And then we have some components. So I mark them with components. And I'm going to import some stuff from the material UI that we're not going to need yet, but I'm going to import them now so that we have them later. So first, I'm going to import a component that's called drawer from at material UI forward slash core, forward slash drawer, capital D. All right. Then I'm going to import something that's called a linear progress from at material UI, forward slash core, forward slash linear progress. Then we have the grid. So import grid from at material UI forward slash core forward slash grid. And we're going to have the icon for the shopping cart import add shopping cart icon from at material dash UI forward slash icons forward slash add shopping cart. Yeah, add shopping cart. And then we have a badge, so import badge from at material UI 
forward slash core badge. So that's everything in this component that we need from the material UI library. We're also going to import some other stuff here later, for example, the cart and the item. So that's what we're going to do later. And we're also going to have some styling for this one. So I'm going to mark this one with styles. And for now, I'm just going to scaffold out a style component and I like to keep them in a separate file. So I'm going to create a new file that I called app.styles.ts. And in this one, I'm going to import styled from style components. And I just scaffold out the component that I call wrapper. So I have to export it as I want to import it in my app. Export const wrapper equals style.div. Save it and go back to the app.tsx. And now we can import it. Import wrapper from dot forward slash app dot styles. And that's our import for now. And as I told you, I'm going to use an API that's called fake store API. I haven't heard of it before. I just Googled some stuff because I needed a fake store API for this application. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use. So we have to create a fetching function for it. So go back to the code. Outside of the app itself, I'm going to create this fetching function because we don't need to recreate it on each render. So const get products equals, and this is an async function as we're going to fetch from an API. I'm going to wait. And I have parentheses and I await again. So this await inside of the parentheses is going to be for the API call itself. And this await is going to be when we convert it to JSON because converting to JSON is also async. So await fetch. I have a string with a URL https for colon forward slash forward slash fake store api dot com forward slash products like this and here at the end after the last parenthesis I have dot json and convert it into json so that's why I have the double awaits we're also going to type this one the data that we get back from the api has a structure of it and as this is TypeScript we want to type that structure. So this structure that I'm going to type now, I can mark it with types, is from the API. And we're going to see this structure when we get the data back. So I'm going to export this type because I'm going to use it in other components also. I call it card item type. And I specify my type. So the ID is going to be a number. The category is going to be a string. The description is going to be a string. The image is going to be a string. The price is going to be a number. The title is going to be a string. So th this is all the properties that we get back from the API, but I want to add my own property and that's the amount because we need to keep track of the amount in our cart. So I add the amount and I type this as a number. So that's the types. So now we can type the return type of this get products function. So colon, and this is a promise as we're using async and await. And the promise is what's called a generic in uh, TypeScript. So we can provide it with a type that we want. So promise, and then we have angle brackets. And inside angle brackets, we specified the type that we created up here, cart item type. So there you have it. That's the correct type for the get products function. All right, I think we're ready to go to actually fetch some data. So inside our app, we're going to use a React Query to fetch our data. So I create a const. I just structure out the data, a boolean that's called is loading, and the error equal. And I call the use query hook. And this one, we can also type the return type of the data that we get back because this use query is also generic. So we have angle brackets, and we type it as the same type, cart item type. And this is an array. And actually, this one should also be an array up here. I missed this one because the data that we get back is an array with all the cart items. So we specify this as an array also. All right, so that's the type for the use query. Then we have the query key, and it's a string. We can name it to whatever we want. I name it products. And then 
this is getting quite long here. We have our fetching function here. So we have the query key, a comma, and then we provide it with a function, get products like this, do some order formatting, and it will place it on its own row. And this should be get products. That's the function that we created up here. And now we can actually console log out some data to see that we get something. Console log data, save the file, go back to the application, reload it. And you can see that we have the data here. And here's the structure that I typed in my type, the category, description, ID, image, price, title. And you can see that it missed that amount prop that I added myself. But otherwise, it looks exactly the same. When I specified that type, I first looked at the data, and then I know the type, so I could create that type for it. All right? So we know that we have some data. We're just going to scaffold out some stuff here before we create our JSX. We're going to have a few functions inside of this one. We're going to have a function that's called get total items. And for now, I just create an empty arrow function. We're going to return null for this one. And we're going to have one that's called handle add to cart. And I also specify it as an empty arrow function. And the last one is going to be handle uh, remove from cart. And I return null. And of course, we're going to return back to these functions later. All right. And before we return the data, the actual data with the products, we can check if is loading. And if we're loading something, we can return from the material UI library. We have something that's called a linear progress. We also have a circular progress if you want to have that. That one is a little bit more tricky to get centered in the screen. So this one is going to be displayed at the top. And I'm going to show you that in a second. And also, if we have an error, we can return something, return a div that says something went wrong. Something like this. Save it, go back to the application, and we reload it. You can see this progress bar here when we load the data. So I think it actually looks kind of nice to have it up here at the top like this. Otherwise, you could have a circle of progress in the middle here or something. And that's, of course, the linear progress that we imported up here before from the material UI core. So we have some data, and we need to, uh, to create a grid with the products. But first, we actually want to create a component for the grid itself. Because if we look here, we have these nice little cards. It's going to be a separate React component. So we can create that one first. So inside our SRC folder, we're going to create a new folder that we call item, capital I. And inside this one, we're going to have two files. We're going to have the item itself. So item.tsx. And we're also going to have a file that's called item.styles.ts. And that's because I want to have my styles outside of the component itself. So inside the items.styles, we're going to import styled from style components. And for now, I'm going to export const. I call it wrapper again. And it's going to be a style div. And we have double back ticks like this. So we're going to fill this in with styles later, but first I want to create the component itself. So go inside of the item.tsx file. And up here, we're going to import the button from at material UI forward slash core button. Then we're going to import those types that we created in this app component up here. So that's why I export them here so that we can reuse them in other components. So I mark this one with types, and I import cart item types, type without an S, from dot dot forward slash app. And then we have the styles, import wrapper from dot forward slash item dot styles. Right, that's every import we need to do. And we're in TypeScript, so we have to type some props for this one. Type props. Because it's going to take in two props. We have the item itself, and that's why we imported this one here. This item prop is going to be of the type cart item type. And then we're going to have the handle add to cart. That's going to be the function in the app here. This one. 
handle add to cart. And we could actually change this one a little bit now. This handle add to cart is going to take in an item. I call it clicked item. And it's going to be of the type cart item type, like this. So you can see the type here. If we hover over handle add to cart, we have the type here. It will only accept this type. So that's why we also have to type this correctly in the prop in the item.tsx. So this type is going to be clicked item, and it's going to be of the type cart item type. And it's going to return nothing, so it's going to return void. So this is the correct type for that one. And then we can create our component, const item. It's going to be a colon, and it's going to be a React dot fc that's the type for the react functional component and this is a generic so we have the angle brackets and we give it the props so this is how you specify and type the props in a typescript react component all right then we have an equal sign parenthesis with the structure of the props the item and the handle add to cart and then we have an arrow function, and we can make an implicit return because we're only going to return JSX in this one. So first we have the wrapper, like this. Then we're going to have the image. So IMD, the source, is going to be from the item dot image. We can set an alt on this one, and we set it to the item dot title. And these are the properties from the data in the item that we get back from the API, of course. Then we have a div. I'm going to have an h3 tag with the item dot title. And as we're in JSX, I have to use curly brackets to grab these values. Then we have a p tag. I have a new pair of curly brackets, and I'm going to grab the item dot description. Then we have another h3 tag for this one. And first, I'm going to have a dollar sign because the price is going to be in dollars. And then I have a pair of curly brackets and I grab the item dot price like this. And then we need to export default item. And yeah, of course, we need to have the button also for adding to the cart. So down below here, where after the, after the div, we have the button. We're going to have an on click on this one. We have an inline arrow function. And we call the handle add to cart. And we give it the item. And I need to have an inline arrow function here because we need to send in this little prop here to this one also. So that's why we can't just do it like this because this will trigger it right away. So that's why I use an inline function. You can also create a function up in the component if you want to do that. But in this case, I think it's neat to have this little inline arrow function. It will be fine. So the button. We close it, and it's going to say add to cart. So there you have it. This should be this component. We're going to style it, but first I want to see if our data works. So I'm going to go back to the app.tsx. Up here, I'm going to import my component. Import item from dot forward slash item, and forward slash again an item. Then I go down here. And in our JSX, in our return statement here, I'm going to create parentheses. And first, we're going to have a wrapper like this. And inside the wrapper, we can map through our data and see if this works. So, first, we're going to have a grid. So, I use the grid component from Material UI. This is the container. So, I mark it with a container prop. And I'm going to set the spacing to three. And then we're going to have a grid item inside of this one. And this is the item that we first have to map through our data and create a grid item for each item in the data. So I have curly brackets. I have the data. I use a question mark because it's going to complain otherwise if it's undefined. So if you use a question mark, it will just return undefined if it can't find the data. Dot map. We map through the data. Then we have the item. And we know that this item is going to be a cart item type. Cart item type. I don't think actually that we need to specify this because it is already specified. 
it already knows that this data will be of the type car item type or undefined. So I try to not set it at all. Yeah, it seems to be working. So we, we map through the item and I'm gonna make an implicit return because we're returning JSX only. So I have parentheses. And then I have a grid item again from the material UI. I mark this as an item, not a container that I did there. I set the key to the item.id because we're mapping through stuff in React and we need to have a key. And then you can set how this is, grid is gonna be structured on different viewports. So the extra small is gonna be set to 12. Small medium is gonna be set to four. This is quite similar to the bootstrap if you have used bootstrap before. So we have the grid and then inside the grid, I'm gonna use my item component that, uh, that I just created and we give it the item prop, we give it the item. And then we have the handle add to cart. It's going to be the function handle add to cart. And then I self close this one. Do I dare to save it? Go back to my application. Yeah, you can see that we have our items here, but it looks like crap. And that's because I haven't styled it yet. So that's what we're going to do. Go back to the application and inside the items.style in the items folder, we're going to style this little sucker. Okay, so we have the wrapper. So first we're going to display it as a flex, not full screen edit. Why did it say like that? Yeah, that's because this one disappeared. Display, flex. I'm going to justify the content to space between. I'm going to set the flex direction to column. The width is going to be 100%. The border is going to be one pixel solid and light blue. The border radius is going to be 20 pixels maybe. And the height is going to be 100%. And then we're going to style the button so we can specify it inside of the wrapper here. That's so great with style components. You can nest stuff like this. I'm going to set the border radius to zero, zero, 20 pixels and 20 pixels. And I'm going to explain that why later. Then we have our image. So we style the IMD. The max height is going to be 250 pixels. The object fit is going to be cover and the border dash radius is going to be 20 pixels, 20 pixels, zero, zero. And the last one we're going to style is the div. We can check it out here. We have a div here inside also. So we're going to style this once. So back to the item styles, the div, the font family is going to be Arial not font, font, family, font, family, Arial. Uh, I set the padding to one REM and I set the height to 100%. And hopefully when we save this and go back to our application, you can see that it looks a lot better now. And this, if you see here, when I click the button, you can see that I style the corners. Otherwise, this one here will go over the corner of the card itself. So that's why I set the border radius on the button. And I think it looks pretty nice. And you can see that it restructure itself now on small viewports. So you can tweak this, yeah, maybe a little bit better if you want to do that. I think you get the idea here on how stuff can look. So that's the items. And we're gonna continue on creating the cart next. So we have this nice little icon here to show and hide the cart. And we're also gonna add some stuff to the cart and do some calculations and stuff like that. The first thing we're gonna do is to scaffold out some stuff in the app.tsx file. And up here at the beginning of the app component, I want to create a few states that we need for our cart. So const cart open, set cart open or you can call it cart is open or something if you want to do that, because this is going to be a boolean that telling us if the cart is open or closed. Equal use state. And we set it to false initially. 
Then we need a state with actual items that we have in our cart. So const cart items, items with an S, set cart items equal use state. And this one is going to be an array. And we have to type this one. I want to set it to an empty array initially. So I create an empty array. And then I specify the type as cart item type like this. And this will create the correct type. If we hover over here, you can see that this is the cart item type. It's an array of cart item type. So that's the states that we're going to need for this one. And then we can scroll down here. Just at the beginning of the wrapper, inside of the wrapper, we're going to create our drawer, and that's a component from the material UI. Drawer. It takes a prop that's called anchor, and we want it to be anchored to the right of the screen. Open. That's going to equal the state that we created, cart open. The state up here that we just created. So it's going to flip between true and false. Shouldn't be a coma there. And then we have a prop on close. So we have an inline arrow function, set cart open. And we set the value to false. And then we close it like this. And inside of drawer, we're going to have our cart. We haven't created that component yet. So we can just type in cart goes here like this. Then we need our open and close button for the cart. And for this one, I actually want to style this button a little bit. So I'm going to show you a different way of styling the button. Last time for the item, I styled the button like this. But you can also style a button by providing it to the style component itself. So inside our app.styles file, we're going to create a new style component. And for this one, the wrapper, we can actually just set the margin to 40 pixels for that one. That's the only style that we're going to need. I just give it some margin so it won't go to the edges of the screen. And then we create a new component, export const. I call it styled button equal styled. And then we can provide this function. Instead of doing backticks and create our styles, we can have a parenthesis and provide it with a component that we want to style. So I'm going to import something that's called an icon button from Material UI. So from at material dash UI forward slash core forward slash icon button. And then I can provide this icon button to the style component like this. And then we have the regular backticks for the styles. And we can type in our style just as we always do with the style components. Position is going to be fixed. The set index. It's going to be 100. We want it to be placed over the other content. We set it to right 20 pixels and top 20 pixels. And as usual, you can tweak these values if you want to do that. So we save the file, go back to our app component, and we can create our button. So just below the drawer. No, first we have to import it, of course. So up here where we have the styles wrapper. We're also going to import the styled button like this. And then we move down here, just below the drawer. We can use the styled button. And this is now a button element or an icon button from the material UI. So we can use the same props as usual. We can use it just as a regular button from the material UI. So we have an on-click handler, an inline arrow function, set cart open and we set it to true when we click this button and this button is also going to have something that's called a badge if we look at the finished application i have this red little badge here that shows how many items there is in the cart and we're already importing this as we did before so we can use this badge now from material ui so badge the badge content and we have created a function for this, but it's empty now. But it's to get total items. And we give it the card items. Then we set the color to error, and that will make it red. 
And then inside of here, we have our add shopping cart icon that we imported from Material UI also. You can see here that TypeScript complains because we haven't specified that, that this function has a parameter, so we can't send in an argument to it. Expected zero arguments, but got one. So we can adjust this one, so go up here to the function. This one is going to take in the items. That's all the items. So we have the type of cart item type and an array. And this will make this arrow go away, hopefully. Like this. Sometimes it's a little bit slow, actually, before it kicks in. Save the file, make sure that it works. And we have our button here, you can see. And it opens the cart. And we can close the cart by clicking outside of the cart. You can, of course, add a button there if you want that also. I think this is sweet, actually. I, I like this sidebar from Material UI. And no, we don't have any items here. So this one will show this badge when we have the items. So we can actually create this get total items function now. We remove this null. And I'm just going to put it on the other row. You can have these curly brackets if you want to have that and create a return statement. But I'm going to do an implicit return here as this is an arrow function. So it's going to be a one-liner. So from the items, that's the items that we send into this function. We're going to reduce. And first we have the accumulator. That one is going to be a number. It's going to return the total number of the items in the cart. And then we have the items. The items is already specified up here, so it will know that this one is of the type cart items type. Right? Then, from the accumulator, we add the item dot amount, and we initialize it with zero. Shouldn't say items; it should say item without an s. So this will iterate through all the items in the cart, and it will use the property amount and add up the amount, and that will give us the total amount that's in the cart. And the accumulator, we give it an initial value of zero, so that will add up. So first it starts with zero, then it adds the amount for each item. But it won't show us anything yet, of course, because we don't have anything and we can't actually put something in the cart. So we're going to see this in action later. Uh, okay, so we have the drawer and we have the button for the cart. I think it's time to create the cart itself. So inside the SRC folder, we're going to create a new folder that's called cart. And inside of that folder, we have a file that's called cart.tsx. And we also have a file for the styles, just as before, cart.styles.ts. We can start in the style file. We import styled from style components, like this. And then we create our component. We're going to have a wrapper again. So export const wrapper equals a style. And this one, isn't a div. I think it's more pro appropriate to have it as an aside because it's kind of a sidebar. I style an aside element, double back ticks, and then I have the CSS. And this is not much, so we can actually do it already now. I set the font family to Arial. I set the width to 500 pixels for my sidebar. I set the padding to 20 pixels. And this should be it, I think. Save the file. Go back to the cart.tsx file. And we can start by importing some stuff as we always do. And also we're actually going to have a cart item. So I think we can create that one also and just scaffold it out so we can use it in our cart. So inside the SRC folder, create a new folder, cart item. And just as before, we have two files, cart item.tsx and new file, cart item.styles. Dot ts. And we start in the styles file, import styled from style components. We export the const that we call wrapper for this one also. And it's going to equal a style.div, double back ticks, and then we have our CSS. And I think, uh, yeah, no, we can wait with the CSS. I'm just going to leave this empty for now. So save the file and we go back to the card item. And first we're going to import a button from at material 
dash UI forward slash core button. Then we need the types. So import card item type from dot dot forward slash app. And then we have the styles import wrapper from dot forward slash card item styles. And then we scaffold out this component. Const card item is going to be a react.fc, a functional component, equal. And for now, we leave it empty like this. We can just create a div that says card item. And we export default cart item and save the file. So we're going to come back to this later, of course, and create that component. But for now, we go back to our cart and we can import this cart item from dot dot forward slash cart item and cart item. Then we have our styles import wrapper from dot forward slash cart dot styles. And we have our types import cart item type from dot dot forward slash app. And you can see that I also comment here everything. You don't have to do this actually in a small application like this, but it's a habit I have when I work on larger applications that I, I like to comment stuff here on the imports because if you have 20 or 30 imports, so you, you quickly can see what you're importing. But you can, of course, remove them like this if you don't want to have them, because we only do three imports here. All right, and this one is going to have some props, type props. We have the card items, and by now we know that these are going to be the card item type, and it's an array, because this is the cart, so it's going to receive an array with all the items that's in the cart. Then we're going to have add to cart. That's the function that we created in app. We know that this one has the type, parenthesis, clicked item. That's the parameter for that function. And that one is going to be a card item type. And it's going to return void. It returns nothing. And then we have remove from cart. This one is only going to take in the ID. And it's going to be of the number type. And it returns nothing. Because when we remove something, we don't actually need to add any elements because we already have all the items in this array that we're going to remove from. So that's why we only need the ID for that one. Okay, so that's the props. So we can create our component, const cart. It's a react.fc, a functional component. We have the angle brackets, and we give it the props, because this is a TypeScript generic. So that's why we can send it in like this. And then we have the props. So we have a parenthesis with the structure out the cart items, the add to cart, and remove from cart. And we have an arrow function. And this one is going to make an explicit return. So we have curly brackets, and we have the return statement like this. So first we return the wrapper. That's the style component we created. Then we have an h2 tag, your shopping cart, or whatever you want to type in. And then we can also type in some text if we don't have any items in the cart. So I have curly brackets, and I check if cart items.length equals zero. Then I have a question mark. It's a turner operator. I display a p tag, no items in cart. And otherwise, we display null, we display nothing. So this will display this text if we don't have any items in the cart. And then we can map through our items. Cart items dot map. We have the item. We don't have to specify the type because it will know that it's of this type. You can see here cart items is of the cart item type, so we don't have to specify it here like this. And I make an implicit return on this one. And I'm going to return the cart item. And for now, I just do like this. We're going to come back to this one. Very important to export default cart. 
otherwise it won't work. So we're going to come back to this one and give it the correct props. But for now, I'm going to go to the app.tsx file and we're going to import cart from dot forward slash cart forward slash cart like this. And we go down in our JSX. Instead of cart goes here, we're going to use our cart component. And you see that it complains because it wants the props. So we have to specify the props also for the cart. So we have the cart items. It's going to be the cart items. Then we have add to cart. It's going to be the handle add to cart. I can actually move them down to their own row. And then we have remove from cart. It's going to be the handle remove from cart. Save the file and we go back and see what we've got so far. You can see that we have our shopping cart here. No items in cart because we don't have any items in the cart. All right. So we go back to the cart. We know that it's working. And this cart item here, we're going to provide it with the correct props. First, as we're mapping through these items, we need to set a key. And the key is going to be the item.id. Then we have the item. Then we have the add to cart function. Add to cart. And we have remove from cart. And remove from cart. And now you can see that it complains because we haven't created this item component yet. So that's what we're going to do next because now it complains and it breaks the application. But keep calm. We will fix this soon. So we are sending in the props to the cart item and we can build our cart item component. So go back to the cart item file, not the styles right now, the file here. And we import everything that we need here. And we can create the props for this one. So type props equal. We have the item. It's going to be of the cart item type. This is a single item, so we don't have an array here. And then we have the add to cart. It's going to be the clicked item and cart item type. And it's going to return void. It returns nothing. And then we have remove from cart. This one is going to be an ID with a number. And it's going to return nothing. So void. And we give it these props inside of angle brackets here. Just as we did before. So now you can see cart won't complain anymore because we have the correct props typed for us. So that's sweet. And our application should be working again. Yeah, it is. All right, back to the code. We can still make an implicit return, but we're going to have parentheses here. And we're going to have the wrapper. And first, inside of the wrapper, we're going to have a div. Whoa, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Okay, like this. Then I have an h3 tag. And there, I'm going to display the item.title inside of curly brackets, of course, because we're grabbing these items now. And we haven't structured out the props. I need to do that also. So up here, I just structure out the item, the add to cart, and remove from cart. And this item, of course, I can show you in the finished one. It's this item here that I create now. So I have the so the H3 tag is going to have this title, and then we have these buttons to add and remove stuff here. So that's the one that we create now. All right, that's the title. Then we have another div. And for this one, I'm going to create a class name. It's going to be information. This one is going to hold a p tag with price. I have a dollar sign. And then I have curly brackets. Don't mistake this for a template literal, because this is just a dollar sign that I print out. It has nothing to do with these curly brackets here. I'm going to grab the item.price. 
this one. And then we have another P tag. We're going to calculate the, the total for each item. So the total is going to be, yet again, we have a dollar sign in front of our price that we're going to show. And I have a pair of parentheses, and I take the item dot amount times the item dot price. And then I need to remove some decimals. So I'm going to have dot two fixed and a two. That's going to give us two decimals. All right. So that's going to be the total that we can see. If I go back to the application, the finished one, going to be th these ones here that we created now. And now we have to create the buttons and the total amount here. So I create another div with a class name of buttons. I create a material UI button. The size is going to be small. I'm going to disable elevation so I don't have any drop shadow on it. The variant is going to be contained as I want it to display with a background in the button. And then I have the on click handler. It's going to be an inline arrow function. And I'm going to call the remove from cart. And I'm going to provide it with the item.id. Then we close the button. And inside the button, I'm just going to type out the minus sign. All right. And then in the middle, we're going to have a p tag, curly bracket item.amount and curly bracket and then we can actually copy this button here paste it in below the size is going to be the same disable elevation and contain is going to be the same the on click is going to be add to cart instead and this one takes in the complete item not only the id so i'm going to remove id and give it the item and this one is going to have a plus sign instead. So that's the buttons. And then we need to have the image also. And the image is going to go below the divs here, last, before the ending wrapper tag. So I have img src equal the item.image. And I set an alt to the item.title on this one. We can self close it like this. And this should be the item for the cart, save the file, just go back to check that everything works. And it does, but we can't see any items because we don't have any way to actually add it to the cart. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to create the function for adding and removing stuff in the cart. And we're also going to display the total amount in the cart. We move back to the app.tsx file, the main component for the application, so to say. And we need to create our functions for adding stuff to the cart and also removing stuff from the cart. And we already scaffolded out this handle at the cart. So we remove this null, create curly brackets, and inside we're going to do some stuff. When we click this button, we're going to set cart items. And this is the setter for the state. And we can always get the previous state from this one. So prev, you don't have to call it prev, but I like to call it prev as it stands for previous in my mind, at least. So we have prev and then we have curly brackets. I'm going to make an explicit return on this one. And first, is the item already in cart? Already added in the cart. Because we have to take into consideration here, when you click add, if the cart is empty, we need to add that item to the cart. If it already exists in the cart, we should only add on the amount on that item. So we should modify the item that exists in the cart. So we can check if this one is in the cart. I'm going to remove the sidebar. I create a const is item or is item in cart, maybe, to be extra specific here. From the previous state, I'm going to find I have the item and I check if the item dot ID equal to the clicked item dot ID. So I check if the item that I clicked on exists in the cart by, by comparing these two IDs. 
I loop through the stuff. It's going to return true or false if it finds it in this array. Right? Then, if is item in cart, if we have this item in the cart, we need to do some stuff. So if we have the item in the cart, we need to update the amount on that specific item. And we can do that by mapping through the items. So return prev.map. We have the item, an arrow function, and we can make an implicit return on this one. We have the item.id. If that one equals the clicked item.id, I create a turner operator. It's going to be on multiple rows here, but I have the question mark. Then, if it finds the item, we're going to update that amount. So I return an object with curly brackets. I spread out the old item, and then I have the amount property. I'm going to update this property, item.amount plus one. If we find the item, otherwise we have a colon, and we're just going to return the item as it is. We don't do anything. We only update the amount on the item that we actually clicked on. So this is if we have an item in the cart. Otherwise, we can mark it as first time the item is added. We're going to return, and we have the array. We spread out the previous state inside of the array, and we add this new item. So we spread out the clicked item inside of curly brackets. We're creating an object here, and we set the amount to 1. So this is hopefully going to add this item to the cart. So I'm going to go through it again here. The first thing I do is I call the setter for the cart items. If we use a function for the setter, we will get access to the previous state. So I check in the previous state if this item already exists, because if it exists, we need to update it instead of adding it to this array. And if it exists, I'm going to loop through all the items until I find the item that I clicked on, and I'm going to add one to the amount for that one. Otherwise, if this is the first time that we click on this item to the cart, the first time we put it in the cart, I return an array with all the previous stuff in the cart. I, I spread it out here, and then I add this item to the array here, where I spread out the clicked item, but I set the amount to 1. So we can see if it works. Save the file, go back to the application, reload it just to be sure. I click Add to Cart, and you can see that it adds it up here. And this actually looks awesome already, but it don't look awesome here. It's quite big. We haven't styled this one yet, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to style this cart item, so that's what we're going to do now. Um, go back to the code, and inside the cart item dot styles, we have this wrapper. First, we're going to display it as a flex. We justify the content to space dash between. We set the font family to Arial. The border dash bottom is going to be one pixel solid light blue. We set the padding dash bottom to 20 pixels. We can actually see how it looks like. Go back to the application. Yeah, we have some styling here. All right. Then we're going to style the div. We set that one to flex1. One. And then we have the class that we call information. And also the class that's called button. So we style these ones in one go. We display them as a flex. And justify content space dash between. And then we're going to style the IMG, the image. Max dash width is going to be 80 pixels for this one. And we set the object dash fit to cover. And the margin dash left is going to be 40 pixels. Save it. Go back to the application. And you can see that, yeah, it still doesn't look right. We have to fix this. It's some stuff with this one here, the buttons. Information, I'm going to go to the cart item. 
No, it's the buttons. Class name, buttons. Yeah, buttons with an S. Change this class and add an S. It should say buttons. And I'll go back and you can see that it looks great now, I think, but we can only add items. And you can see this is what's so great about React. Also, we can reuse stuff. We have created this component and we use the same function for adding stuff. And it just instantly works because it's the same function that we use here. So the thing we have to do now is to create our function for removing items in the cart. So go back to the code and inside the app.tsx, we have our function that's called handle remove from cart. And this one is going to have a parameter that's called ID. And this one is going to be a number. We remove null, create curly brackets. And yet again, we're going to set cart items. We have the previous state, an arrow function. We can make an implicit return. And for this one, I'm going to use reduce. So I have the prev.reduce parenthesis. And another pair of parentheses, I have the accumulator and I have the item. An arrow function and I make an explicit return on this one. I think it's more readable. We also need to specify the initial value for the reduce. Otherwise, TypeScript will complain for us. So we have a comma, we have an empty array, and we're going to specify this as cart item type and an array. And then it won't complain for us later. And the first thing we have to do in this reduce is to check if, if the item.id equals to the ID, if we're on that item in the array that we clicked on, we're going to do something. So we have curly brackets and we have another if statement because we want to check if the item amount is one, then we're going to remove this item from the array when we click the minus sign because we go from one to zero and it's no longer in the cart. So if item.amount equals to one, we're going to return the accumulator. We remove this item from the array. So we only return the accumulator and do nothing. Otherwise, we're going to return an array. We spread out the accumulator, the previous array. We create a new object where we spread out the item. We have the amount, and the amount is going to be subtracted by one. So from the item.amount, we have minus one. So if we're on the item that we clicked on, we first check if the amount is one, then we remove it from the array. Otherwise, we remove one from the amount. And if we're not on the item that we clicked on, we have the else statement here. We're going to return an array. We spread out the accumulator and we return the item as it is. We don't do anything with the item. And I have some stuff here that is not correct. Uh, 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 uh. Why is it so? Uh, I guess it is. Yeah, this one here should, of course, remove the comma and it should go inside of here instead. Like this. So the reduce starts here and then we have a comma and then you have the array and we specify it as a card item type like this. So I'm going to go through it again just to explain. So we set the card items. We have the previous state. I call the reduce on the previous state. We have an accumulator that starts with an empty array that we specify as the card item type, an array of card item type. Then I check if the item ID is equal to the ID here that gets sent in as an argument to this one. We know that this is the item that we clicked on. And if the item amount equals to one, I return the accumulator. So I skip this item and this will delete it from the array. Otherwise, I return a new array where I spread out the accumulator and I have a new object where I spread out the item and I subtract one from the item amount. So we remove one from the amount. Otherwise, we return the item as it is. So we have the accumulator and the item in this array. All right, save the file. We can go back to our application and see if it works. And it does. And you can see that it calculates this beautifully when we remove stuff here. So I'm pretty happy with this. We only have one more thing to do, and that is to display the total amount in the cart. So go back to the code and inside the cart. That's why we also made an 
explicit return here because we're going to create this function here. So up here at the top of the cart component, we're going to create a new function, const calculate total equal. It's going to take in the items that is going to be of the card item type and the array. We have an error function. I make an implicit return, so I move down to the row below. And the items dot reduce. I yet again, I'm going to use the reduce method. We have the accumulator. It's going to be a number. And we have the item. The item we don't need to specify because it already knows that this is of the cart item type. So we have an error function and the accumulator. And to the accumulator, I'm going to add the item dot amount times item dot price. And then I have a comma and specify the accumulator to be zero initially. So we have the cal calculate total function. And if we move down here, just below the card items, we create an h2 tag total colon, and then we have the dollar sign again, just to display it in front of the price. Curly brackets. We call the calculate total. We give it the cart items. And this is fine, but I want to remove some decimals on this one also. So I have dot two fixed. And I give it the two because I want two decimals. Save the file, go back to the application. And you can see the total amount. And there you have it. We have a fully working cart, at least some of it. We can't actually buy something, but <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. So I think this actually is a good practice because you can use this in the real world, so to say, because this is not actually far from a lot of stuff you probably will do if you work on a real world application. All right, so this is the application. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. And I also promised you, I'm gonna give you a code to this nice little event here, testjssummit.com. So the code is actually gonna be Webenfalk free two because this is the second code. So Webenfalk capital W free two all in one word. And it's only five spots. So the five first of you that grabs this one gonna get this event for free. And I think it's gonna be awesome. Testing is actually something that I need to learn more about myself. And you can see there's some great people here on this event. So, so, so I think it's going to be awesome. Grab those spots. The five first of you that goes to this site and register can use this code and you get it for free. So that's sweet. It's going to be great, this event. I want this channel to grow big this year. So please support me and I will put up more stuff like this on my channel. And as always, see you in another one.